many women in the way. <laughs> many of them. I just had a light march. Many women just. You were on the camera. Camera's running. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey, you're on the bottom of the Yeah, how do we do that? You're in charge of that. Can't you say I'm still. Is currently used as a family cemetery. 
um, and has been for several years. Um, the RA zoning does allow cemeteries. There's no rezoning required. However, there are standards you have to meet in order to establish a commercial cemetery. And there are four standards um, that's on you all's page two and three that they can't seem to meet. And I'll go over these one by one. The first is the standard for access. The code requires all cemeteries shall be provided from an arterial collector or state highway. In this case, Lewis Richardson Road is classified on the thoroughfare plan as a local road. However, it is built to a collector standard. It's an 80 foot right of way. And typically, your local roads are 60 feet or less. But the road is, is wide enough um, to handle the traffic. Um, so staff didn't see any reason um, to deny the, or to use the existing roads for their access. The second standard is the minimum, minimum land area. We require cemeteries to have a minimum of 10 acres. In this case, the applicant has five acres. Uh, we talked among us, amongst ourselves as to 10 acres, why was that a requirement? And that was something that was suggested when the UOBC was adopted. And the thing you can find is that the state, the state of Georgia, requires perpetual care cemeteries to be a minimum of 10 acres. So that was staff you know, reasoning of why we adopted that in our local code. But the applicant does have five acres. Um, we just couldn't find anything reasonable that would not support the establishment of a cemetery on five acres. There are some in the county that sits on less than 10 acres. Not many, um, but there are some, and there hasn't been anything that really caused a problem with those cemeteries. The third um, standard is that of minimum road frontage. We require the lot for cemeteries to have a minimum road frontage of 200 feet. When the applicants began this process, the lot had only 60 feet frontage. But one of the applicants owned property nearby and was able to do some land swapping. So now they have a total of 150 feet of road frontage. So they're still lacking 50 feet. South felt that was adequate, adequate enough to handle the ingress, egress of the traffic or the sections that would come you know, to and from the cemetery. And then lastly, the standard requires that you provide for a buffer yard. Whenever you have a commercial use that is adjacent to residential zone property or agricultural property, the code requires that you provide a 30-foot vegetative buffer around the boundary of the property. The applicants in this case is proposing a 15-foot buffer. The staff had some concerns with that and thought that buffer needed to be increased to at least 20 feet because the setback requirements for any buildings that go along with the cemetery has to be 20 feet from the side property line. So we thought 20 feet was adequate enough. And within that 20 feet, they have to plant so many trees, so many shrubs, every 100 linear feet. So with all the variances that they are requesting, staff um, is recommending approval of all except the buffer requirement. And we are recommending a 20-foot buffer in lieu of their 15-foot requested buffer. Um, we have found that we're getting, we're getting more and more requests for cemeteries. It's something that the county really had, had to deal with because it was, you know, it was already done with the Sunset Hill being there and Riverview already being established. So we're finding more and more private property owners establishing cemeteries. So this, there's really nothing for us to compare, you know, our pros and cons with. Um, I looked at our standard and I found a couple of pieces of properties where it met all of the standards. Um, and it's, it's, it's an area that's rural in nature. And we, staff, just feels that as long as the cemetery doesn't go through a residential subdivision or a suburban area, you know, there probably wouldn't be a problem, but there's been some issues raised with some of the adjacent property owners, which is quite understandable that this is a dead end road. Um, typically, your collector and your arterial road system co 
you know, garbage traffic to dump them out on major thoroughfares. Well, this road, while it is built as an eight foot right of way, it is a dead end road. Um, <coughs> but that's that's just something we just have to weigh, weigh in and, sit and you see how it works. But with that, staff is recommending approval, and I'll be more than happy to answer any questions. Yes. Is there anyone here that's in opposition? As a matter of fact, at each of your stations, I received two um, correspondence via email of uh, opposition from nearby property owners. I have a question about the road system. Um, some of these properties, as you drive in that road, are larger law, uh, apartments. Um, and so could they turn into someday subdivisions of Five acres, and that would then turn this road from being a local road into being a collector road, because a subdivision would then come out of one of these larger tracks onto this road. It's possible um, the RA zoning, which most of that property has a zoning, um, does require lots to be a minimum of two and a half acres. Um, there is some R1 zoning in the area, which requires lots to be a minimum of one acre. I think it would be a challenge for someone to get R1 zoning, but not an impossibility. I've seen the strength of things happen. <laughs> so, but yes, you're absolutely right. If they were to take one of those larger tracks, change the zoning, if they were successful in changing the zoning. Well, yeah. or, or combining, buying up some of those and then turning it into uh, two and a half acre lots, you could make a subdivision with two and a half acre lots. Yes. And I have another question about this touches the Bay Branch. Is it in wetlands? Yes, the southern portion of the property does touch the wetlands, but they are not interested in developing the southern portion, just the northern portion. So, so that yellow um, outline is five acres. And yes. The top part where it's laid out for the cemetery is about two and, and a half. Two and a half. It would be fair to say about two and a half. And and but. If the cemetery were established, they could use the whole five acres for the cemetery, yes, even down into that wetlands part? Well, no. Some of the standards um, talk about, you know, the crops cannot go into any of the wetlands. I mean, there is a setback distance that crops have to be from any type of wetlands. How far would that be to set that? Um, Cemetery should not be located in a wetland, 100 year floodplain, floodway, or flood hazard area. So there is no established setback. Just can't go in. So basically, the requirement by the state and the ULBC is a 10 acre minimum. 10 acre minimum. And they really don't have five, they've really got two and a half to they're work with. Yes, they're developing two and a half. So we're talking about a seven and a half when you cut down to a seven and a half acre variance. Yes. And does the Bay Branch flow out of what used to be the Nelson Hill Swamp? I'm not sure. No. Nelson Hills is south and west um, of this property. I'm, I'm not really sure. I don't see, on the map there, I don't see where it connects. Okay. And, and then one more question about, um, in the 2009 flood, how far did the water come on this property? Do you know? Is there a requirement that there's a heavy fence around this property? No requirements for fences. However, if they were to construct a six foot, six to eight foot OK fence, they get to reduce their buffer for some. But there's no requirement for fence. Okay, I have a question. On the frontage, they had 60 feet and you said they have acquired 90. Has that been acquired through a deed? Through a deed and a flat. As a matter of fact, we're reviewing the survey flat now. <coughs> Is that the portion here that narrows 
on on this plat is is that there are fence right here. The applicants are here. They can probably answer that. I didn't walk the property. Um, the because I'm wondering if there's no access at all. If not just down here to the tip that they couldn't get in, but that it's all wet all the way. It's, as far as that looked like it dropped. I'm not sure, Ms. Trina. The applicants are working. Okay. Do we know how many, based on the usable land, how many graves you can get out of the remainder of the land? This is kind of new for me. No, but on their site plan, which is part of your packet, they, they are proposing 1,200. 1,200 just on that upper, that northern portion. And that's not to include the southern part of the property where you could possibly develop more graves. It could be a condition of approval that, you know, the development is tied to the site plan. Um, cemeteries are very new for us, um, but that can be a condition of approval. Yes, sir. The infrastructure is in the cemetery itself. Are there any regulations that are governing this development? We do regulate, if you're proposing any wells on the property, a plot has to be so many feet from that drinking well. Um, from our conversation with the applicants, they're not proposing any buildings, um, any wells, any septic tanks, none of that. Roads? Roads. Uh, yes, they are proposed. There's an existing road now, um, which uh, it has to be improved some. Uh, the, the county will accept gravel, you know, um, crushed asphalt. Um, the road would have to be improved some. Any other questions for her? This started out as a family cemetery. Are these the three, the three applicants, are they the three owners of the land? According to the deed, they are the three owners of the property. And I you know, don't know what type of covenant or an agreement that was made that this would be a family cemetery, but I'm sure people that are here can probably shed some light to that question. <clears throat> Any other questions? All right, thank you, Carmen. Oh, oh, yeah. my, my concern is the family dynamics of this case. Were there any meetings of the mines prior to the planning commission? Meeting concerning this case? Well, there was no planning commission meeting. We did meet with the applicants. Um, Both sides? No, just the owners, the current owners of the property. Was there any knowledge at that time that would make that the opposition to this case? I raised that question to the applicants, and at that time they didn't seem to think there would be any opposition to um, moving forward. And it wasn't until the last two or three days that we started receiving phone calls. In addition to these two letters that are here? That's correct. There were also phone calls? Yes. From other people or from the From the nearby, the nearby property owners. Or from the nearby property owners. Yeah, are all the property owners family members? There's a lot of family out there. Um, there's a lot. Lucas Richardson Rose, the Richardson family and the, the Lucas family. They own just about all of that property. So there were family calls and non family calls. I would say yes. Is there is there a question regarding um, ownership? No. Like standing or like you know, whether or not somebody's actually gonna file a lawsuit to enjoy you know, quiet title. I mean well, to enjoy somebody from developing the property? Actually, one of the phone calls I received today, actually, um, and they may have requested that in the email, is to request the board to table so they can get legal counsel 
Um, I don't know how serious that was, but I told them, you know, they can ask the board to table, but it wasn't a guarantee. The board, the board felt they didn't have enough information to make a decision that they could table the request. So I don't, um, they mentioned legal counsel. I didn't know what that really meant. Are they here today? Um, no. The people in opposition don't want to stop this. We're going to get to ask them questions. They're not, they're not even here? No, they're here, yes. Okay, good. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, is there an average <coughs> number of people that attend funerals that, that we know of? No, I don't think you can qualify that.
and get the family to get this taken out. And, uh, and most of the land owned to the Bridgestone Road belongs to my family. I would say 75 to 80 percent of all the land on that road belongs to my family, my brothers, my nieces, and my nephews. I have a this question. My brother. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, the cemetery, would it, uh, would it, would the public have access to it as well, or just, like, or just church members? Well, the public will have access. Okay, so not just church members. But we don't have that many members. I know what you did say, all the church members. Well, that's what originally, that's what we started, just church members. But now that we're going through this, I say maybe it would be better just to have open to the public with, you know, with the right, you know, duration. But uh, this would be, this would be a thing. This is my name, Cliff. I'm Cliff Lucas, the youngest of the brothers, the last of the brothers. And your address, sir? 4760 Valdale Road. Thank you. Uh, access, someone had, had some uh, questions about access. Uh, uh, <clears throat> that's, in, as um, Ms. Braswell stated, that it's a road that is wide enough to accommodate uh, uh, traffic. The other thing is that it is a, a, a dead end street. There's less uh, traffic on that street because uh, there's nowhere to go now unless they build a bridge across the river. And we own the property on the river where the road stopped. Um, the other thing is we were concerned about perpetuity. And that even with a family cemetery, you know, we're gone, my children, you know, the, uh, I can't predict what they're going to do or my grandchildren. They're not going to get out there and mow some grass or maybe they won't want to spend the money. But if it's commercial, then that money will uh, keep the uh, cemetery looking viable and, and keep it up. It is a, a corporation and it's a family corporation and that will be handed down to uh, uh, perpetuate to uh, the uh, family members. So that's the reason, that's the main reason that we went, uh, want to go commercial with the cemetery. Uh, <clears throat> I know uh, some of the people might talk about opposition to it, but they have to think about the long term. How would it look if it's a cemetery that's grown up? Um, is that better than maybe wondering whether there's some criminal might be coming out to the graveyard? <laughs> Certainly people in the, in the cemetery is not going to rob anybody. Um, and they're not going to be traveling up and down the road. Uh, a cemetery, normally, there's only the people who are coming up to, at the last rites to, to commit the people to the ground. So there's not a whole lot of uh, people coming out there. We have a large family. As he mentioned, we have five people out there already. We have, and I've had, uh, Ten, nine brothers and two sisters, well, four sisters. And uh, <coughs> that's a lot of family. So we've never had a traffic problem. And I think one of the, we have one of the largest families in Lyme County. So I don't think anyone will be coming up that's going to clog up the road if that's the problem. Um, as far as the minimum land area, she covered all that. But I just wanted to mention that. That part, of it, I think that's important. Uh, certainly, perpetually, because uh, we want we want a cemetery to be maintained. I know there's some cemeteries here that they uncovered along the uh, St. Augustine Road that had grown up, and you know nobody taking care of it. So this we're looking forward to, and I think that's a good thing. And that should be a concern, not only to us as a family, but to Lambs County as a whole. Thank you. Oh, we're going to have questions. Come yeah, back. Of course, sir. <laughs>
We have questions. We have questions. Okay. I'm sure we have questions. And, and I'll go first. Okay. Um, the, how, in the 2009 flood, how high did the water come on that property? Not on the property at all. So Bay Creek doesn't, Just, the Bay Branch doesn't come up there? No, no. I don't know. No. Not even there. Not, not even on that point? That low part, no. Well, just where the Bay Branch is. It, it down goes the bottom down to piece. this. Yes. Okay. It, it doesn't come where you can see it. We okay. gotta see them anywhere. Okay. Did it come up to the fence that's there? No, no. no. Um, I, I, I would say the Bay Branch is about two to three hundred yards from there. Um, and okay, so it didn't, it didn't come up. Right. Um, Carmela has suggested instead of a 15 foot buffer that you put a 20 foot buffer. Would you be able to manage a 20 foot buffer instead of a 15? We were there with her when they recommended that. And we appreciate it. You're okay with that. And the cemetery when I was out there was locked. Will the cemetery be locked or open? It will be open once uh, it's approved. It's open now. You can get in, uh, but you have to know that the lock on there is not locked. Okay. <laughs> All right. But in general, the cemetery would be open so yes. that people could come and visit. Exactly. Visit yeah. the cemetery. Exactly. And put now there's only family there, so we have a right. lock there, but the lock is not locked. Okay. And so. it would be open or locked at night. Open. Uh, probably be open at night, okay. unless there's a problem. When was this cemetery established? Twelve years ago. And a lot of these regulations wasn't even in place at that time. And with all of your family members, you just got five people We don't die fast. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> my, my oldest sister is 98. Well, didn't somebody say y'all had six brothers that had Died. The three of y'all left. Three yes. brothers. Mm -hmm. And the oldest one, it will be 90 in July. I hope that they make that. So, I Approximately how many graves uh, will probably, as it sits now, cover <clears throat> without any expansion? Without any expansion? Mm -hmm. I, I believe today. it's. I don't know the exact number, but it's around 1,500. I mean, how many can it accommodate without any other development? That's what I'm saying. 1,500 right now? Exactly. You can get to a only area within 1,500 space? Exactly. Right now? Yes. Do you have adequate parking space right now? Right you now, yes. Parking? <laughs> yes. <coughs> The lower part of the cemetery is we're using the parking. And right now some of it they park probably on some of the some of the plots, but if there's that many, but the lower part of the cemetery, we use the park. Are there any brothers in opposition of this case at the moment or nieces and nephew? Some of my nieces uh, and the nephew is here, so that, that might be an opposition. I'm not sure. Have anything to do with it? I was asked once before legal ramifications concerning the deeds. Uh, oh no. And with offspring. Oh no.
Is there anyone else here in support of this application? Is there anyone here in opposition to this application? And come to the lectern and give your name and address and tell us your point of view. <clears throat> And your opposition is what? Now, just so you understand, this is not a rezoning. The cemetery already exists. This is so that it can meet standards, so that it can be a commercial cemetery, so that people outside of the family can be buried there. And the things that they're asking for relief are the size of the cemetery, so it's going to be a little smaller, instead of 10 acres, it's going to be smaller. Um, the road frontage, which instead of 200 feet of road frontage, they're going to have 150. And the buffering, which instead of having 30 feet of buffer, they're going to be asking for 20. So those are the things that they're asking relief on. So, okay. Um, well, our issue is it becoming a commercial cemetery because obviously it's been there 10 years. We could be a family cemetery, we're okay with that. And I'm not a member of the Lucas Island family. But my family does own over 30 acres of land out there. I'm the very last plat um, at the end of the road. So my issue is that there are going to be 1,200 cemeteries, 1,200 graves there, um, possibly, the possibility of 1,200 graves. Um, when there are funerals, that means that people are going to have to come because there's nowhere to turn around on the road easily. So if they're coming all the way down to my end of the road, that means they're going to have to use my land to turn around on because obviously there's not a cul-de-sac. Um, and that's just unwanted traffic for our neighborhood. I would prefer for it just to say a family, a family cemetery for the few family members that they have that do bury out there because there are numerous Lucases they have no desire to be buried in that cemetery. They have died in the past 10 years that are not buried there. Okay. Yes, um, I agree with Alshonda. Um, our area is a rural area. It's quiet. We have children out there. We have elderly people out there. Our most concern is the traffic that's going to uh, accumulate out there. And it's going to bring our property value down. And you're going to have people out there that's going to view our homes and see that our homes are isolated and that's going to be caused crime. I see that my uncle made a joke about, you know, people robbing grave, you know, because I said something about that, because it's going to bring crime out there and it will. People will see that our homes are isolated, you know, because we work all the time. They will see that there is no neighbors there, so it's going to be a potential crime that they're going to try and do and break in our homes. And might I add that neither one of the gentlemen that are trying to make the cemetery live on the road. They only can live on our road. My father is deceased, and I'm speaking on that. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you know, people are going to come from the city and see, you know, that this area is rural, it's quiet, you know, there's not very much traffic out there. And, you know, during the day, we're working. And there's people out there, that's all they do is just ride around and try to find places they can break into. And we don't want that. I'm fine with being a family cemetery. I'm fine with that. I have no issue with that. But we don't want the unwanted traffic and the unwanted crime out there. Are there any questions for these speakers? I do have one question. I, I'm only just curious to know, um, I mean, who did you guys talk to about the evaluation of the land if a cemetery was there? Like, did, did someone, I'm saying, did someone tell you that? Or did you just, did y'all just come to that conclusion? We, um, sadly, we just found this out Sunday night. Um, we didn't know anything about it. I um, got a petition where people on the street signed, and I have uh, brothers that don't live here, 
That's the only thing that and as far as you the can property get value, that to Carmelo, and she'll take care of that for us. And as far as the property value is concerned, um, as I said before, my family has quite a bit of land in the road, and there was someone that was interested in purchasing land um, out there on our road, um, and he said to me, "Well, what about a cemetery?" So just with that statement, and he changed his mind and went and purchased land on Skip Bridge Road. So that's with it being a family cemetery and only having five graves. So imagine what will happen if there are 1,200 graves on the property. If we ever decide we want to sell a portion of our land. And there's well, is it not clear that 1,200 graves can also be allowed there at this moment? I mean, uh, 1,200 family members, but somehow along the way, perhaps the church will expand or can expand, and then the additional individuals may want to be married. In other words, there's nothing to stop them from burying 1,200 people today. But if this is not, if this is floor, doesn't that mean that they cannot sell plots to people? Because I don't know what the contracts are not for family members. Perhaps even family members have to pay something. My name is Willie Flowers. My address is. Um, we have a property at 3710 Lucas Richardson Road. Also, we have a property on Dollar Road, which is across the street from Lucas Richardson Road. If I just have one question before I get started. Is, is it okay if I ask a question? Okay. Is it possible for Ms. Braswell to point out where they're talking about the, the cemetery? I believe I know where it's located at, but as far as on the plat, the location with the cemetery, with it Did on the plat? What's outlined in yellow? Okay, all right. May I approach the, the plant over there? <laughs> These two is where we own property at on Lucas Christian Road. I married into a family. Um, I married one of their brothers daughters, the oldest daughter, uh, and if this is the cemetery right here, you're talking about 1,200, and I, I, I'm not in opposition of it being a family cemetery, but when you're talking about opening up to the public, you're talking about 1,200 bodies, and I don't know how it is in the Caucasian race, but I know in the African American race, uh, the final rights is very important to us, very important. And, I mean, there could possibly be 50 or 60 cars coming in for a funeral at the last rides. The gate, you only have one opening going into that cemetery, one opening. And from hearing you all talking, they can't park on the right of way, all right? So they do have a concrete. Is it any way possible, Mr. Bresswell, for you to bring up a picture of the, the actual cemetery itself? Yes, sir. The, the, the pictures of the cemetery. Oh. This is the only opening leading into the cemetery. They do have concrete. All right, so I assume where the body's going to be at, they're going to either have to park on this concrete or on the side, since they cannot park on the right of way. And the only thing I'm asking, like I said, I don't, I don't have a problem with it being a family cemetery, but I just hope that y'all stick with the, the, the code as far as it being a cemetery. Well, that, uh, that's exactly what we're discussing today. In order to be a commercial cemetery, yes. it has to meet certain standards. Yes. There are some things that it doesn't meet, and we're trying to decide whether we can meet those and have it be a safe place for people to happily leave their loved ones. Yes. And also, uh, can you go back to where the plants were? Okay. The other one. The, the, yes, this, okay. From my understanding, uh, I, I believe you had asked a question about what happens if there's a subdivision developed in, in, in this area. From my understanding, there is some talk of the, the, the children 
of the Lucas family that own these plants right here are thinking about selling these plants and trying to get it to develop into a subdivision. So it's a possibility that these plants right here that are owned by Lucas children, they could come together and sell this to a developer and see about a subdivision in there. That's true. The reason that I asked that question was about the categorization of the road. Right now it's categorized as a local road. Yes. Should there ever be any other road connected to that road, it would become a collector. Mm -hmm. And then it would not need relief from being a collector road because it would be a collector road. And the thing, again, that we're trying to decide today is should they be granted relief on the buffering, on the um, roadway frontage, and on the minimum acreage? Now, Carmel, I have a question for you. Um, the 200 feet of road frontage, um, could we make as a condition that they have two entries uh, in that 250 feet? Yes. That they would have to have two entrances? So we can apply conditions if we wanted to. And, that, and that's my only concern uh, as far as being a, a family cemetery, but and lowering the standards to comply and be talking about 1,200, I mean, and burial and you're, sites. You're saying that the typical, summit, uh, typical burial landmark in 50, that, 50 yes. cars with yeah. two people each? Yes, I mean, like I said, um, we are, I've been to burials and everything. Uh, my father is a, is a pastor of a church, the All Nations Living Center, 707 Wall Street. And we have funerals at our church pretty regularly. And the fall, the, the, the hearse, and with everyone falling behind up there, the name of the as well. and, and the limos as well, I mean, it's very easy on a, on a, a a pretty good, decent person, all right, that's pretty well known in the city of Mount Austin to have 30 or 40 cars at a bare minimum coming to a funeral and everything. Mr. Flowers, Mr. Flowers I, I wanted to clarify something. I'm the one who said that they couldn't park on the right of way. Mm -hmm. And as a legal point, I don't know that it is illegal for them to park on the right of way. I said that based on driving out there and I did not feel like there was room for them to be there. So I I just want you to understand, understand. that that was probably I sh I spoke out of turn in the words that I used. I should have said that there didn't seem to be room to because I don't know for sure if legally they can. And, and, and like I said, as far as it being a family cemetery, I don't have no opposition, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm praying that y'all would uphold the standards um, for them to open up this commercial. And from me hearing them, I'm hearing them talk like they need to open this up so they can bring maintenance to the cemetery. All right. Um, to me, that's a poor reason to change a family uh, cemetery and open it up to the public for finances keep it maintained. That's a very poor reason to do that there. Okay. All right. Also, at, at the end of this road here, I mean, there's no turnaround at the end of Luke's They're going to come into the cemetery, though, and they're going to turn, turn, come, pull into the cemetery, come to the burial, and then they're going to go out that same entrance that they well, came how, in. How will they turn around? They're, they're, they're going to drive on the loop road. Presume that that road is a loop inside of the cemetery. So they can drive in. It's a one-way road. comes in like this. They're going to pull all the way in, and then they're going to pull back out and make a left-hand turn. Do we have any other questions for this, these speakers? I have one for Carmelo. Um, okay. So if they, if they, let's say they met all the requirements, there's nothing stopping them from making a commercial. That's correct. Great. That's correct. So if they, oh. Oh, I do the light bulb went on. Mr. Lucas, you own all of the property that surrounds this cemetery. Yes. You could make the cemetery be 10 acres. I could. You could. And you could give the cemetery 200 feet of frontage. Probably could. I don't know. Anyway, acres we go into Bay Bridge, I don't know what piece of property he owns. Um, that doesn't matter. Um, so, now to you in opposition. Mr. Lucas seems to be holding a lot of cards in his hand. 
because he's asking for relief on a smaller piece of property. The three things he's asking for are size of the property, buffering, and the access. But he can make all of those things be bigger and meet the standard exactly, and then we wouldn't be here at all. And then he could by right make a commercial cemetery because he would have met all of the standards. Is that correct, Carmel? With the exception of the access, because Lucas Richardson Road is still... But, it, but you said it's built to the it's, correct it's, standard. It's built to collect the standard. And we have seen local roads. The road I live on used to be a local road, and when it was built to the standard, that changed to collector, even though it doesn't go anywhere. I also live on a road that doesn't go anywhere. But it is a collector road. Uh, okay. Does that clarify? We, we know that we don't want to have a commercial cemetery in our neighborhood. And the traffic on a rural road, 50 cars, when I was driving out there, I was like, whoa, this would be a long cemetery procession to go down this road. I can understand that point. But the things that we're deciding today are, can it be smaller than the allotted? Can the buffering be different? Can they have a little bit less access? Are there any other questions? Can I ask the board one question? Uh, go ahead. Okay. Um, and, I, and I don't know we this. Might not answer. Ask, I understand. But is it known? I think that the gentleman there asked the question having a cemetery without lower the property, or would that have any effect no, we on have, the property? We have no idea about that. Outside of our purview. The tax assessor would tell you. Thank you very much, ladies. Are there any other questions? Okay. Is this already in effect, these rights? Because I didn't see that when I went out there. Not all the way, just the paved area you see, probably just to the circle. So there's going to have to be a clearing yes. of bullets. No. It's all clear. It's, it's, it's all clear. It's, it's clear. Yeah. But there, I, I mean, that, that site plan there. is, again, a work in progress. That's something conceptual. Um, they would have to present something to us um, that we can keep on file. Do you have something to add? No, other than it is clear. The property is clear. Okay. Oh. That's the survey. And the parking, I would like to add one thing. The parking. Come to the, come to the lectern and give us your name and address, please, sir. My name is Rodney Kittery, 107 East North Street, Valdosta. Awesome. <coughs> and the, uh, the issue about the parking, uh, when I did that preliminary drawing, the uh, roads were laid out in, uh, with a width wide in the middle with a parallel park on one side and drive around with a one way drive all the way in, circle in, circle out. So it would be like Sunset Hill. This angle. Okay. And still come make the 12th and break the plots. Yes. And still not be in the wetlands. That's correct. Any other questions? Any discussion? Would anyone like to make a motion?
go through that one little gate in both directions. Would it be helpful if the board, if they so desire to table it, have the applicants go back to the drawing board and present something that's more preventable? Um, and, and then the other thing was the number of graves. There's been some concern about 1,200 graves. Um, I'm going to address the traffic that's going to be on there. If there's, I mean, that, that is a rural area. People are out there, they, they, they are living there. It's family land passed down to them, but they are still choosing to be on that land in that rural area. If you have 50 cars, I mean, I don't know how much of a regular basis, you know, that they'll be traveling traveling in and out of well, that. Well, homeowners up there have a valid point. There's, there's people that want to be uh, traveling that area that want to not travel that area. I don't live on that street, so I'm concerned about the person who lives on that street. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the only thing I see is that if they came here today and met every requirement, every requirement that there's nothing we could say. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. With it's exception of access. With 38, with, with, and it, okay, so access <laughs> still prevents them right. because it is categorized as a local road. Should sometime in the future it be recategorized in the thoroughfare plan, then nothing would prevent them. That's correct. So it would just be a matter of time waiting and Mr. Uh, Lucas making his property bigger, the cemetery property bigger. Yeah. And the way I understand from the county engineer is that because of the funding that was used to improve that road, um, had something to do with the funding. So my question is, why is it so big? Why is the right way so big? You know, that's not typical for your rural area. And it had something to do with the funding they received from the state. Can I ask a question? What qualifies it and pushes it over to a commercial cemetery? What is the qualifying? When you start to invite the public, there are some exemptions from the state. Church cemeteries, family cemeteries, and there's one, one or two others that you know, the state exempts them from rules. Um, but in this case, a commercial cemetery, anything outside of a family. Just what qualifies a family? <laughs> so this question is <clears throat> Because, I mean, I know of family cemeteries that have very close family friends that are buried on the family cemeteries. I also know, I mean, and I guess my question is, if a plot, on, I could see that if a plot in a cemetery is sold specifically, for money to be brought into a corporation that owned a piece of property, that that would qualify as a commercial cemetery. But uh, if a donation is given on behalf, or even if just permission is given for a family friend or something like that to be buried on a family cemetery, I, my question would be, does that disqualify from no longer being a family cemetery to somehow now being a commercial cemetery, I wouldn't think so. I mean, but I don't know, and that's that's my concern here is, technically, it seems to me that if it's a family cemetery and the people that are in control of giving permission of who can be buried there and who can't, if they give permission to whoever they want to to be buried there, they can do it. I don't know if the statute qualifies or defines family. We don't in the world. Hmm. So, so technically, it would seem to me that they could, the people in control of the cemetery could let anyone be buried there if they want to. Because I mean, I'm not checking IDs. That we don't right. have to do that. We do that. But, no, you know, we, we will trust that they do the right thing. And if someone calls the question, then we have no other choice but to open the case on it. Right. Okay. 
Okay, does the board want to table and wait till another week? Uh, our next meeting would be... I believe it's January 5th. Uh, actually, we have the schedule right here. Yes, January 5th. Um, Madam Chairman, I would like to entertain that we table this issue because um, some things came up as far as the opposition that we were not aware of in the last minute. And I do believe that the family need to have a discussion. And I do believe that more concessions need to take place before I can truly act on this as a motion to approve or disapprove. So that's my motion is to table this until next month. And, and I second the motion because um, I agree. I agree as well. And I believe the next time when we come here, um, everybody's going to come with this loaded information. Everybody in opposing. And everybody in proposal. Everybody should, should be here then. We just make a decision then. All right, possible. we have a motion by Dr. Hauser and a second by Mr. Hogan. All in favor of tabling this until next month. Raise your hand. There we go. Madam Chairman, is there anything you all would need to bring to you all that you don't have today? Information from some of the interest Parking, yeah. parking, parking. Yeah. parking. Yeah. And what conditions are they currently allowed to let people be buried there? And, and they also now have heard the concerns of those in opposition. Um, they need to be prepared in some way to address those concerns. And maybe they want to do that by having a little family huddle at home and, and address those concerns at home. Uh, then tell, tell us how y'all have made up. I, I would be interested to know opposition-wise where these people are located along the road. If, who, who all sign? I'm just, not necessarily that you can provide that, but if opposition is coming back next time, I, you know, and they could somehow give us a little bit more information about where along the road these people are, that would that would help us and give some weight, give some weight to that information. The other thing I have too is if, if you live at the start of that road and you don't drive all the way down, you maybe didn't see the sign and know that um, cemetery sections were going to be coming past your house um, unless you drove all the way down the road to the cemetery to see the sign. Um, so I know that adjacent landowners are notified, but the ones at the top of the road um, maybe didn't have sufficient time because they didn't see the sign. Well, we got, we, got, we got a good enough citizens here, so I mean, okay. I just... So, we will see you next month. Um, again, same time, 2.30, January the 5th. Yeah. Okay, now our next case is... I'll tell you case B-A-R-20... Excuse me, y'all, y'all, it's back. Hey, Twenty fifteen sixteen, the city of Valdosta. Why is the city of Valdosta under the county? We're requesting the board to table this request. There was an added variance. Yes, there was an added variance to this one variance, um, and we need to re-advertise and run it back through the, the cycle. So we're requesting you all to take it. There will be two variances they're requesting. Could someone make that motion, please? I'm going to make a motion to table. Okay. Second. Okay. Did you get that, Tracy? Let's see. Make a motion. Mr. Hogan, second. No, Paul. Oh. Paul. Oh. Okay, thank you all very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, that was okay, so our final case of the day, City of Valdosta case ABP 2015-09, Snake Nation Press, 110 Fourth Street. Um, by the way, there's not a sign out front.
I drove around your property today. I did not see. The west side. Must have been on, east, been on east, east Force. Yeah. This is where I was on west, on twos. Yeah, I got pictures of it. Yeah. There were four There's four signs out there okay. today. Yeah. Yeah. Four. Okay. Three foot sign. I was going to say, because I saw you got a lot of money planting commission. I got a half load of stuff going on over there. We got lots of. I was going to say, I'm sorry. Okay. There were. Okay. There are there. Tracy. Yes, ma'am. Thank Please you. present. Thank you. This case is from Snake Nation Press. It's a multifaceted request. Um, they are requesting a variance to LDR section 28-218-23, letter J, as it relates to the setbacks for telecommunication tower in Penn. The property is located at 110 West 4th Street. Consists of about a third of an acre, is zoned for residential professional, and is also in the local historic district. The property owners, Snake Nation Press, are proposing to renovate the house. It's a single family house currently, as you can see in the picture, to include a professional organization slash meeting space, as well as a radio broadcasting studio, which include an about 59 foot antenna, and will include the owner's private residence as well. When I said this request is very multifaceted, they have your number two uh, several hearings. The first was March of 2015 in front of the Local Historic Preservation Commission to add the antenna, which they were approved. Just keep in mind that any, most exterior changes, ramps, things of that nature, are going to require them to go back to HBC should they desire to do any exterior additional exterior renovations. The second facet is going from Planning Commission to City Council. They'll go to City Council next week for a conditional use for the radio station as well as the meeting space and the antenna. The third one is coming in front of you for the tower setbacks. The rule is, however tall the tower is, is how many feet it has to be set back from the dropping line. In this instance, the tower is 59 feet tall which means that they would have to have 59 feet from the point where the tower is set, located, to all four property lines. They meet this in three of the four property lines. The only one that they don't is along the western property line. There we go. And they are short 19.5 feet. So the tower as located is 39 and a half feet that particular property line. So they're requesting a variance of 19 and a half feet from that particular property line. Given the fact that the lot is a little bit narrower and there are some trees, vegetation, as well as the house to kind of shield the visibility of the tower from most areas, the I many areas around that property, staff did find hardship and is able to recommend her approval for this particular variance. Any questions? Are there any questions? Just so I can clarify, on that drawing, it appears to me that the road itself is a little over 20 feet wide, but from the edge of the, from the center line of the road to the edge of the property, am I reading this correct, in that it's 62.5 feet? Let me double check the side for you real I just want to make sure I understand. It looks like it's 62 feet. Yes, yes, sir. So even if the tower were to come down, it would not project into the road. Um, it would project to the center line of the well, just barely into the roadway. Okay. Into the right way. Right. In, into the right way, not, not into the, the roadway. Right, correct. Right. Sorry for the clarification. <laughs> and that's if it laid all the way down. Correct. Not caught on. Anything else? Trees. Hopefully not the house. And in the opposite mm -hmm. direction, there's no danger of it falling on it. Right. Um, because the other three property lines are more than 59 feet. Um, one by about half of the the other one by the Okay. Is the applicant here and would you like to say anything? Yeah, I guess we're the only ones here. <laughs> I'm Paul Arandula and this is Verna Jay Arandula. We're at uh, 110 West 4th Street. And uh, 
wish to say you had a pointer because I, I and I'll go over there. This is where the antenna will be located. It's at the back of the house. That's the point. So the house extends here. There's still 59 and a half feet to the property line on this side. It's 75 feet to the Langdale property, which is the house behind. The house is here, so we're, we've got plenty of room anyway. It's like 156 feet to, to there. So this is the only problem that the east for the the east wind is here. And so I think it says 37 and a half, but to the edge of the road is another 20 feet. So it's right on the edge of the road where the where the tower would fall to if it did. Uh, but the, the one thing about it is the tower that we're looking at is uh, lightweight. Uh, it's uh, going to just be swung up into place. It, uh, it's it just, uh, I think it's 600 pounds total for the whole tower. So it's, uh, it's uh, not uh, excessively damaging. It's not like we're putting up a, tree, uh, a church steeple or something where it did fall. What's the, There's, yes, sir. Me, wait. What's the normal weight for a tower inside? Oh, I wouldn't be able to tell you. I'm only I'm only aware of the tower that we're uh, that we're interested in and that we're we're running. Yeah, uh, but uh, the we're going to have a handicap ramp come off here, off the back of the house, and I don't. I guess we're not talking about that today. Um, no, just the and this is the parking that. lot that we're adding to. So that's uh, those are things that we that we are going to do as part of construction. Uh, the only so, thing we're talking about is how close is the tower to the edge of the property. And I think I've, and I told you that. You, yes, you yes, did. Yes, <laughs> we are very compartmentalized in our responsibilities. Yeah, I noticed that. I wanted to participate in that last one so bad. I did too. I did too. <laughs> All right. Are there any other questions for our applicants? Will the tower in any way interfere in any way with reception of the surrounding Neighbors for cell phone usage, for internet usage, or uh, TV, anything. No, uh, it's strictly FM radio, and uh, and it's only a hundred watts. So it, it it's uh, it's according to FCC. Everything we're doing is according to the FCC regulations that have, that have been uh, given us to uh, when they gave us the construction permit. So there's, there's no uh, problem with airplanes, and, and it's only a three and a half mile radius, which is pretty much in a perimeter road. So there's, um, uh, we, they, they take into account any other radio stations with, that we, we would interfere with. All that was taken into account when we applied for the permit. So there, it, it won't interfere at all. It, it's, no, it's only nine feet taller than a ham radio tower. So, it, it, and it's, it, and the frequencies are all different. And all, the, all the frequencies are different from radios to, but the one thing is, um, your phone has a chip that can receive FM radio. And, and one day maybe it will be activated and you can hear our radio station on your smartphone. And we also will have EAS, emergency alert system, that that's also required for the FCC. So we will work with the police and fire and, and emergency to, to uh, automatically will uh, slip into uh, emergency broadcast in here. But to answer the question, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're compartmentalized. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
or Jason an email to confirm so we have a good number. Um, it is Dutch Street, but um, we would love to coach you. All right. Is there any other business on this fine December day? Tracy, one more thing, and this is my lab. We talked about the schedule, um, the schedule for next year. However, I neglected to mention that we need to actually vote on it and adopt it. So, okay, so at your place, I believe you have the schedule January 5th, which we announced to all these fine folks will be here then. The only alterations are like we talked about last month, meeting July the 12th, because that first Tuesday was the close to the 4th, and then moving September the 13th because the first Tuesday fell the day after Labor Day. But other than that, it would be on the first Tuesday. Make a motion we approve it. Second. Okay, you have a motion and a second. All in favor, raise a hand. Okay. I'm done. All right, we are finished. Thank you very much.